war on terror is concerned, I think the first thing that needs to be established is that whether it's a war on terror or a war of terror, as a recent article said. I think the problem is America spends so much money on its defense budget every year that if for like five or six years they have no war to fight, they just need an excuse to bomb someone. Fine, what I'm not trying to say that what happened at 9-11 did not warrant a retaliation. Fine, it was. But if America is such a proponent of civilization, uh, proportionality and everything, how can it justify one 9-11 saying that one 11 equates to ruining two countries, Iraq, Afghanistan, and then now a third one, apparently, Pakistan. Where does the, the whole civilization of America go here? Uh, we've seen this type of actions from America before. We have the example of Laos. America bombed that country. This is an actual start. For seven years, every day, one bomb every eight minutes. Seven years. That goes into the millions. And what excuse they had? Small borderline issues that people were crossing over from the border. We didn't see that happening in Mexico. They just need an excuse to spend their military budget somewhere. They took 9-11 and escalated it to such a scale which it should not have gotten. Fine, if there were, uh, there were people from Afghanistan, from the Taliban, focus on Taliban. Suddenly they realize that Saddam Hussein is producing weapons of mass destruction. Then they say that it was a mistake. They're not doing that. Now they're saying that Iran's nuclear program is going to affect America, come on, Iran can't even target America, for Christ's sake. But, yet, but still, they're trying to find excuses to do something. As a woman who has prided herself on the fact that I lived through a, a period of Pakistan's evolution, when women were considered partners, when women could pursue life, liberty, and the possibility of happiness. I am appalled by what is happening in this country. I belong to a generation of women who played cricket and played tennis with young men on uh, university campuses without anyone either throwing stones at me or, or saying that I was a bad Muslim woman. Um, I was also among the pioneering women who uh, took up careers in media and careers in education simultaneously um, and have always worked towards the empowerment of women. So for someone like myself, what is happening in Pakistan is nothing less than a nightmare. And there seems to be nothing standing between them and us. I hate talking this way because there, is, there should really in, in a healthy environment, in a healthy nation, not be this feeling of the other. Unfortunately, we have had to, to think in terms of the, them and us. You see, force and aggression, history has proven, has never worked. Human beings resent force and aggression. You know, a, a two-year-old child and an 80-year-old man will not allow force on him. Maybe for a short period of time it has worked, but the reaction to that is, is always extreme. So American armies and Pakistani army has used guns. Taliban may not have those sophisticated guns, but they have their own bodies. And you can buy a body, but you cannot buy the mind and the spirit of an individual. And as long as the spirit is alive, he will react. So what has happened in Suat is that this force of power has got together. They've completely crushed that beautiful valley in between. With the Taliban or with any other extremists, the best thing is try to understand their psyche. Their psyche is not correct. But you have to work through that psyche. Now their psyche is Islam. We are doing it for Islam. We are doing it for Sharia. It is the duty of people who are trying to establish order in that area to work through Islam. To say, okay, Islam forbids violence. That's the first principle of Islam. And you need to have enough people within Swat who can bring up evidence from Quran and say, wonderful, we want Islam. 
we want this rule but we want a rule which is truly islamic and tell the taliban that let's work through this system so you have to have at the moment a compromise situation then after the compromise a third alternative that is neither your way nor our way but together we find a new way but for that first of all you have to listen to them you listen to the side understand them not agree with everything that they say but bring them to a compromise through the islamic way and then once you listen to them they will listen to the other party as well so far there's been no dialogue it's been a monologue where the monologue has come from guns and their monologue has come from violence that has never in history solved any problem in the world the government has created such a picture of this region to them that the american people i don't think they realize what a different nation this is they are people from all spheres you have the conservatives just like americans have the conservatives there are people in america who still raise eyebrows to gay issues there are people here who still raise eyebrows when they say see a girl walking around uh, a jeans and a t-shirt yet they do accept that this these are changing times and these are new things that are happening in the country and even people are getting more liberal here in pakistan as well we aren't all AK-47 holding, shalwar kameez wearing, bearded, turban terrorists. And that is the image I think they need to get out of. Because of 9-11, they are so afraid that they have their emotions have constantly been played with, with this 9-11 issue. I don't blame them for thinking this way because one catastrophe in their country was shaded in such a way that their minds have totally jammed on one thing but i think it's time that they realize that the image their government is showing to them of pakistanis that is not a true image